I'm going to start. I'm going to give you a bunch of scripture tonight. And um, Beth and them are going to come up, and we're going to do some more uh, stuff. But I wanted to uh, to let you guys know that uh, that this right here is, is some good stuff. So I'm in um, the book of Daniel, okay? Uh, no, not Daniel Cook. This is, this is the book of Daniel in the Bible, and it's chapter 3, and it starts in verse 14. How many of you all guys have ever heard of uh, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego? Y'all ever heard of them? Okay. On Medea, it's Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, but, uh, but that's just on Medea. It's Abednego in the Bible. So These are pretty cool, pretty cool guys. And the reason that this stood out so much to me is because this reminds me of exactly what is going on right now. You see, I don't know if you guys are familiar with what's going on, but if, if, if I stand right, um, and I know we've put emphasis on it, but it's not emphasis on the program. It's emphasis on the God who's over the program. But the past few weeks in this county have absolutely been phenomenal. And between the girls' Christmas, the boys' Christmas, and what you guys are taking out of God's Word and putting into life into other people at school, great job, phenomenal. It's phenomenal. Uh, I'm, I'm speaking to a group of students this weekend, this Saturday night, and uh, I was going to tell them, and I'll tell you guys the same thing. Here's the deal. Check this out. Did you realize that in a week's time, some of the faithfulness, based off the of faithfulness of you guys who are so on fire for Christ that you took it back to your schools and helped lead other people to Christ, do you realize that you led more people to Christ in one week than some churches will do in 10 years? Did you realize that? I mean, that, that right there is awesome. And so I just want to congratulate you guys and just say thank you. I just want to say thank you. You guys are phenomenal, okay? And, uh, and so thank you for, for what you're doing, and thank you for what you're going to do. But I want you to check this out, okay? In Daniel chapter 3, verse 14, it starts with and, but it says, And Nebuchadnezzar said to them, Is it true? Say true. He says, Is it true, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, that, that you do not serve my God or worship, say worship, the image of gold I have set up. Now when you hear the sound of the horn, the flute, the zither, the lyre, the harp, the pipe, and all kinds of music, if you are ready to fall down and worship the image I made, very good. But if you do not worship it, you will be thrown immediately into a blazing furnace. Then what God will be able to rescue you from my hand? Check this out. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego replied. That's a cool name. I think about naming my kids Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Wouldn't that be funny? Shadrach, come here. Meshach, get off of my leg. Come on, dude. So check this out. So Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego replied to him, King Nebuchadnezzar, and this is what they're saying to him, King Nebuchadnezzar, we do not need to defend ourselves before you in this matter. If we are thrown into the blazing furnace, the God we serve is able to deliver us from it, and he will deliver us from your majesty's hand. But even if he does not, we want you to know, your majesty, that we will not serve your gods or worship the image of gold you have set up. Now the reason that I read that scripture and the reason that God laid that on my heart to read tonight is because some of you all in here, even throughout this whole series of worship, are still entering into the, the time of worship and you still have another God. And so what I need you to do is I need you to go up to somebody and to that other God and say, you know what, no longer will I serve you, no longer, Gary, will I worship you, but from now on, I'm going to serve God. And I'm going to serve Him with everything I have. See, I told you all at the very beginning of this series that people don't have a problem drinking, a problem drugging, a problem with sex. They don't have a problem with an addiction. they got a problem with their worship. And you see, uh, you see what exactly was going on is, is they were saying, this is the God that you are to worship. This is the God that you are to serve. 
But these three faithful men, Donnie, they said, you know what? No matter what may come against me, we are going to serve God Almighty. And did you see what he said? He said, we will not worship the false God because our God will, what? Deliver us from the fire. So can I tell you that there's some of you in here tonight who've been worshiping the wrong God. You've been worshiping girls and guys and phones and social media sites and sports and schoolwork and clubs and organizations. Some of you in here are even worshiping other people, leaders, youth pastors, adult leaders. Some people are worshiping this church, but not this God. I mean, that's true. There are people who are so on fire for their church, but they won't do a bit of anything for their God. We see that the church is a representation of God. It's not a God. And so the thing is, guys, is even though you're in a fire right now, and even though everything in your life has crashed down around you, and it may seem like that life is a living hell, can I tell you something? Can I break something down for you? God will deliver you from that fire. He will reach down and he will pick you up and lift you out of the fire that you are in. And some of you right now are in some mighty, mighty hot fire. But God still has a plan for you. How many of you all believe that tonight? Do you believe that God has a plan for your life? If you do, then why don't you live in that? Why don't you seek his face and cry out to him and call his name and say, God, I know you've got something better and something bigger, and I want that. Because, Spencer, here's what we do. God, give me all you got. Lord, I want more. God, I need more. Jesus, help me. Hallelujah. Praise the name of God. And we fall in the altar, and the next thing we know, we walk out the door, and our lives reflect nothing but hell. So don't tell me that you're not serving any other God. Don't tell me that you're being obedient to the one and only God when everything that you do reflects something else. I'm going to read some other scripture to you guys, and I want this to sink in. In the book of Matthew chapter 12, and this is long, but I want you to listen to this. It says, make a tree good, and its fruit will be good. Make a tree bad, and its fruit will be bad. For a tree is recognized by its fruit. Oh, you brood of vipers. Wow, that's pretty strong words. And Jesus said this. He said, you brood of vipers, how can you, who are evil, say anything good? For the mouth speaks what the heart is full of. A good man brings good things out of the good stored up in him. And an evil man brings evil things out of the evil stored up in him. But I tell you that everyone will have to give an account on the day of judgment for every empty word they have spoken. For by your words... You will be acquitted, and by your words, you will be condemned. Now, I don't know about you all, but I've said some pretty wasted words in my life. I mean, I've said some good stuff. I have spoke life into other people, but I have also said some stuff that was totally useless. Anybody else ever been there? I know nobody else has ever said anything useless, right? I have. I have said stuff, and it says that my empty words... I will have to answer for, and I will either be acquitted or condemned. Now, how many of you all in this room will come and raise your hands, praise God, and then go out and cuss? See, no hands go up because nobody wants to admit that they do that. How many of you would do that? Is there anybody that would? How many of you would say, I would never do anything like that? That right there is wrong. Is there anybody that thinks that's wrong? To raise your hands to Jesus, but then go out and cuss? Does anybody think that's wrong? Can I tell you something else that's wrong? To come to worship and sing a song, and the words that come off your lips, you do not mean. You see, when, we lead, when they lead worship, 
when worship is here and the words are on the screen for you to see, it's not just here for you to read, it's here for you to say. And there's power in the tongue. You see, what you say, and Ken Freeman did an awesome job at explaining this, but what you say is what you mean. What comes out of your mouth comes from your heart. And there is power in the tongue. You say, some people can spend their whole lives building up for something. They can work at something and, and do the best they can to become everything. But when it all, it can all come crumbling down in a matter of seconds by the words we say. Now, how many of you all would bash God and say, God, I have no time for you. I don't want anything to do with you. Jesus, leave me alone. I've got it all figured out. Is there anybody in here that would say something like that? Didn't think so. But here's the deal. When you stand and directly disobey worship to God, it's not, not disobeying Beth, not disobeying me, disobeying God. In worship, you're saying, God, I've got more stuff. I've got other things that are a whole lot better than you are. I don't need you. I don't, I don't need your anointing. I don't need your time. I don't need any of that because my life is fine. You see, when we worship, our words are full of power. I'm going to read some other scripture to you. I'm going to ask uh, Beth to, to join me up here, and, and we're going to, here in just a minute, we're going to try to maybe answer some stuff, and we're going to go over something here in just a minute, and I want to show you guys. Uh, in James chapter 3, verse 8, it says, No human being can tame the tongue. It is a restless evil full of deadly poison. Now, I made the comment earlier tonight in a meeting, and I told you guys a while ago, I have said some pretty useless things in my life. I have. Even as a pastor, I've said some pretty useless and dumb things. But it says right here in James that I cannot tame my tongue. I cannot, but God can. And you see, some of us need to find ourselves in this altar and seeking the face of God like we've never sought Him before because some of you all are speaking death over one another and you don't even realize you're doing it. You see, some of you are speaking so much death that you're literally shattering a heart. You see, I could get a knife and stab somebody and that's going to be pretty bad and painful. But I could just as much do just as much damage, probably even more, by just the words off my lips. In Romans 8, 6 through 8, it says, Those who live according to the flesh have their minds set on what the flesh desires, but those who live according, in accordance to the Spirit have their minds set on what the Spirit desires. The mind governed by the flesh is death, but the mind governed by the Spirit is life and peace. The mind governed by the flesh is hostile to God. It does not submit to God's law, nor can it do so. Those who are in the realm of the flesh cannot please God. I told you guys before, and I'm going to tell you again because this is so true. How many of you all um, have ever brought somebody to church and you know they're lost? Anybody ever brought somebody to church and you know they're lost? Now, I want, I want you to be honest with me, the ones who just raised your hand. Have you ever heard that lost person, be honest, you're fine, um, say something negative about Jesus or the church? You ever heard them say something negative? Okay, I have. Most lost people do say something negative. You know why that is? Because they're by mind of the flesh. You see, how, duh. I mean, why would I say something good about something I'm not a part of? I'm not going to go out and say, hey, man, Satan's the bomb, Donnie Bird, because my mind's not flesh. My mind's of the spirit. That's exactly why a lost person puts people down. So can I tell you something for the ones of you in here right now? who are going through a lot of pain and suffering that you're catching over the stand that you are making for Christ, and let me know, it's very evident that some of you all in this room are being put down and bullied because of the stand you are making for Christ. I've seen it on some of your Twitter, some of your Facebook, and I've heard it in the community. But can I tell you something? The reason those people feel like that is because they have a mind of the flesh and not a mind of the Spirit. That's why they speak words. That's why it says we cannot tame our tongue because they can't fix it, but Jesus can. And there's some of us in this room tonight who if we had 
the touch of the master's hand, it would heal that tongue. In Proverbs 18, uh, chapter 18, verses 20 and 21, it says, From the fruit of their mouth a person's stomach is filled. With the harvest of their lips they are satisfied. So it says, you know, what we eat and what we taste, that's all great. But it says the tongue has the power of life and death, and those who love it will eat its fruit. And in Matthew chapter 6, 21, it says, For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. You want to see something fake? Come to worship, but don't worship. You want to see something fake? Come to worship and just sing. Don't mean it. You want to see something fake? Do that and then look in the mirror. You see, fake is not someone who takes a stand for Christ, messes up, realizes that they're wrong, and gets called out for it. That's not fake. Fake is when somebody knows what to do and refuses to do it. See, guys, the reason we've been teaching you on worship and the reason we've been telling you all this is not because we're trying to condemn you where you are, is but because we want to grab you where you are and tell you that we want to set you on higher ground and make you better. See, I still look out into the crowd today, and I'm cool with this because me and Beth and Greg have all talked, and I'm cool with the fact that there's some of you in this room who you know who Jesus is. I mean, not you don't just know him. You know him. You got it going on with Jesus, and y'all want more. You're like, give me more. Woo, give me more. Coach, put me in. I'm ready to play. And then there's some of you who you know who Jesus is, but you're still kind of like, I don't understand this whole worship church thing. I go to a church that sings hymns. I come to Elkhorn. It's kind of a little bit more pepped up, and I feel like I'm, I'm actually getting a little bit of the spirit in me or something. And then there's some of you in here who you just don't get it, and you're not going to get it. And that's not bad. That's just where you are in your walk. But here's what I want to show you. For the ones of you who know Jesus and know who he is, when you say this, you are calling out to the Savior. And so what we want to do is I would like to demonstrate this to you. I would like to show you how powerful your words are when you call upon the Lord. How many of you all know that as a Christian, I have, if I have the faith to move a mountain, I can say mountain move and it can move? How many of you all believe that? I truly believe if I say mountain move and have the faith, I can move a mountain. Anybody believe that? Because I do. You see, here's the deal. We say, oh yeah, we have the power through God, in a, or through us, from God, we have the power to heal, we have the power to raise the dead, we have the power to see people saved, we have the power to do all this. We say it, but we don't believe it. And so here's the deal, guys. When you worship God, you are praising His name. One of my favorite songs is Revelation song by Terry Job. Uh, Phillips, Craig, and Dean does it. There's several people who, who have done it and made just a, a big hit out of it. But what I love about it is because it takes, a, it takes a second and it goes, holy, holy, holy. Holy, holy, holy. Father God, fill this room. Lord, may we feel your presence like we never have before. Father God, thank you for being here. Thank you for being so evident. And Lord, thank you, even though I'm getting some blank stares. God, thank you that your word will never return void because, Father God, this is going to someone. So, Lord, continue to use this in a mighty way. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty who was, he was, he was God, he is God, and he is to come. You see, God is never changing. So when we sing, it's much more than just a song. It's much more than just call me maybe and, and, and all these other songs that are out and, and everybody likes and One Direction, people are going bananas over them and, and Justin Bieber and all this other stuff. It's much more than just that. That's just a song. But a song when we sing here is just a song until we make it from here and then it becomes worship. And guys, we have got to worship the Lord.
Check, check, check. Okay. I just want to tell you guys, can y'all hear me? It has been a joy to be with you guys for two months. To share our heart about what my deepest heart is to worship the Lord. To share that with you all has been a, pl- a privilege and an honor. But I also want to tell you this. The battle is real. Because I'm in a battle right now. My body is so tired that literally I had to choose to worship up here a while ago. It is a choice. It is going to be a choice. Not always are you going to come in and feel like, praise your holy name, we love you, Lord, I I jump, I dance. Not all the time will you automatically feel that. It's a choice that you make. (laughs) But just like a while ago, as soon as he said, holy, 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 are you Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. That's straight out of the scripture, straight out of Revelation. Because he is holy. When we take our minds off of ourselves and just how tired we are, or just how bad our whatever it is that's gone on that day, and we put it on Him, that's worship. Because worship isn't about us, it's about Him. So I just wanted to tell you guys you know what? Some days when you come into worship, it's not going to be easy. You're going to have to push through. You're going to have to push through being bullied at school. But choose you this day whom you will serve and stand on that forever and for always. Because I will say this to you all, God will honor that. He will honor that. And lives will be changed because of that. Um, I think, I think it's just, uh, I think it's time to go into, uh, Greg is going to teach on, a, he's going to talk about um, Here I Am to Worship. And we're going to go through the lyrics of that, and then we're going to worship with that song, and then we're going to do imitation, if that's okay with you. Okay. And the message is exactly right, guys, because um, Here, here's the deal. You, you do have to choose. I would lie if I told you every Wednesday before I get up and preach that I just feel like preaching the word of Jesus. I'd be lying if I said that because that's not true. There's times that I'm just like, man, I'm, I'm tired. Man, my head hurts. Man, these kids are wearing me out. Man, so-and-so's made me mad. Man, I just had a bad day. Man, I'm mad. I'm hurt. You know, whatever. I, you, you have to choose yeah. constantly. Yeah. But Beth is exactly right. When you choose Jesus, right. he will honor that. Brian says all the time, and it's true, I've never seen the righteous forsaken or the seed begging for bread. And what that means is the children of God, those who belong to God, will always be honored by God. And guys, that's why we have to choose faithfulness in everything that we do. The Spirit of the Lord is already so sweet in here tonight. I know God's wanting to move. You know, what Daniel has said is just so true and so powerful and is exactly what's been on my heart with all of this. But I know any time that I've gone to a teaching, so many times I hear This is what should happen. Uh, This is what you're doing wrong. This is what you're doing right. Not enough time is spent, a lot of times, because I have to have it this way, saying this is how. This is how to do it. I need need it a little plain like that. So a song that um, really stood out to me in this is Here I Am to Worship. It's an older praise song, but it just says so much. And I'm going to ask you guys if you would just stand up. You've been sitting for a while. And Aaron's going to put the words up for us so we can look at that.
And what Daniel said is exactly right. You know, when you come into a worship service, you may not be able to relate to the music. And the reason you have trouble relating to the music is because if you're singing about Jesus, my Redeemer, and you've never made a decision, and He's never been your Redeemer, it's going to be hard for you to understand that. Or if you sing, Jesus, my Savior, and you've never allowed Him to come into your life and to save you from the sin that you were born in, then that's hard to understand for you. And if you've never been sick and experienced Jesus as healer, then how can you understand that He heals in the way He does? But when you come to the realization that Jesus loves you, that's the first thing you'll know. He does love you. So when you sing a simple song like Jesus loves me, it'll mean something to you. So let's just stop for a minute and ask him. Let's sing that. Knowing that Jesus loves you. Jesus loves me. This I know. Come on. For the little honk for Jesus. Sing it. Yes, Jesus. The Bible tells me so. And it tells you everything that we're getting ready to talk about with this next song, we'll go ahead and start singing. Light of the world. Now Jesus says, I am the light. And as long as I'm here in the world, I am the light of the world. You stepped down into darkness. You brought light into the world. You brought me out of my darkness my lack of understanding. You open my eyes and let me see. You know, that's not talking about just a physical blindness, but a spiritual blindness. And that's what we've tried to talk to you about in the last few weeks. You're spiritually blind. And I'm not checking my text here. I'm actually fixing it. Sound. But as you sing this song, if you sing that understanding these things that you're saying back to God, you're sharing your heart back to Him as you worship, just like Daniel said. Beauty that made this heart adore you. That's a love relationship with the Lord. And hope of a life spent with you. That's saying, I dedicate the rest of my life to you, Lord. And it leads right into, so here I am to worship. That's a declaration. Here I am to worship. And here I am to bow down. I'm willing to surrender to you, Lord. To fall down on my face, prostrate before you. Lifting you up and putting myself at your feet, Lord. Here I am to say, that you are my God. You're declaring your obedience, your servanthood, your whole life to the Lord. 
You're altogether lovely. I looked at that word, altogether. That means completely. You're altogether worthy. Many things we've been taught about the worthiness of God to be praised. And you're altogether wonderful to me. And as it goes on through the song, King of all days, oh, so highly exalted, glorious in heaven above. He was on the throne in heaven. But he came down here because of you. I always wonder, why would, did Jesus have to be born in a manger? Of all places, God, couldn't you have a, a place reserved for him in an inn to be born, your son? And the Lord let me know that he had to be born in the lowest of places so that nobody could say, he's better than I am. None of you were born in a cave or a manger or a barn. All for love's sake became poor. So here I am to worship. Here I am to bow down. Here I am to say that you are my God. You're altogether lovely. You're altogether worthy. You're altogether wonderful to me. And when you get that, worship will begin to fill you up. And you're going to have to let it out some way. Some of you have already experienced that. Some of you are just at the beginning of it. But you're being offered the keys to the kingdom. And I love this little pre-chorus it has in it. And I'll never know how much it cost to see my sin upon the cross. The reason you'll never know that is because you'll never have to endure what Jesus did. He took on the sin of the whole world, all the past sins, all the current sins, all the sins that you haven't committed yet. He took them on for your sake. So as we sing this song this time, this, this one time, take all those things into your heart and speak it from your heart. God doesn't care what you sound like when you sing. He's listening to your heart. So let's start with a word of prayer. Father God, we, we sense your presence here. Just help us, Lord. Help us to find our way. We know that you seek those to worship you in spirit and truth, Lord. So give us this moment. Allow us to lay everything else aside, our pride, especially our pride, Lord, and to come to you with, with all of our heart and all of our mind and all of our strength. And just sing this love song back to you, Lord. Help us to worship. Help us to sense your presence. I know that we can sense your presence as we worship you. Lord. So hear our hearts. Lord. Light of the world, you step down into darkness. Open my eyes, let me see. Beauty that made this heart adore you. Hope of a life spent with you. So here I am, do. Here I am, do, Father. Here I am, do. We're all together. All 
together wonderful to me. King of all days, oh, so highly exalted, glorious in heaven. Humbly you came, to the earth you created, all full of sake became poor. So here I am to worship. Here I am to Yes, Lord. You're all together love. All together worthy. All together So here I am to worship, here I am to bow down, here I am to say that you're my God, you're all together lovely, all together worthy, all together I'll never know how much it costs to see my sin upon that cross. I'll never know how much it costs to see my sin upon that cross no I'll never know how much it cost to see my sin upon that cross no I'll never know how much it cost to see my sin upon that cross. So here I am to worship, here I am to bow down, here I am to say that you're my God, you're all together lovely, all together worthy, all together wonderful to me. So here I am to worship, here I am to bow down, here I am to say that you're my God, you're all together all together worthy, all together wonderful to me. And I'll never know how much it costs to see my sin upon that cross. I'll never how much it cost to see my sin upon that cross. I'll never know how much it cost to see my sin upon that cross. I'll never know how much it cost to see my sin upon that cross. So here I am to
put a lot of a lot of hurt, a lot of disappointment. Uh, for some of you in this room who you maybe you've never had a relationship with your father.